how many alien civilizations are out there in those four phases that you're talking about. When you look up to the stars and you're sipping on some wine and um, talking to other people with British accents about something intelligent, intellectual, I'm sure. Uh, do you think there's uh, a lot of alien civilizations looking back at us and wondering the same? My romantic view of the universe is really um, taking loans from my logical self. So what I'm saying is I have no doubt, I have no idea. But having said that, there is no reason to suppose that life is as hard as we first thought it was. And so if we just take Earth as a marker, and if I think that life is a much more general phenomena than just our biology, then I think the, the universe is full of life. And the, Fermi, the reason for the Fermi paradox is not that um, they're not out there, it's just that we can't interact with the other life forms because they're so different. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily like has been depicted in Arrival or other, you know, um, I'm just saying that perhaps there are very few universal facts in the universe and that, and maybe um, that it's not, it's quite, the te our technologies are quite divergent. And so I think that it's very hard to know how we're going to interact with alien life. You think there's a lot of kinds of life that's possible. I, I guess that was the intuition. Yeah. You provided that uh, the way biology itself, but even this particular kind of biology that we have on Earth, uh, is is something that uh, is just one sample of a uh, nearly infinite number of other possible mm -hmm. complex, autonomous, self-replicating type of things that could yeah. be possible, and so we're almost unable to see the alternative. Uh, versions of us, huh? I mean, um, we still be able to detect them. We still be able to interact with them. We still be able to, like, which, uh, what's exactly is lost in translation? Why can't we? Why can't we see them? Why can't we talk to them? Because I, I too have a sense. <laughs> you put it way more poetically, but it seems both statistically and uh, sort of romantically, it feels like the universe should be teeming with life, like super intelligent life. And, and uh, I, I just, I, I sit there and the Fermi paradox is very, it's felt very distinctly by me when I look up at the stars, because it's like, it, it's uh, the same way I feel when I'm driving through New Jersey and listening to Bruce Springsteen and feel quite sad uh, it's like Louis C.K. talks about pulling off to the side of the road and just uh, weeping a little bit. I'm almost like wondering like, hey, why why aren't you talking to us? You know, it feels lonely. It feels lonely because it feels like they're out there. I think that there are a number of answers to that. I think the Fermi paradox is is perhaps based on the the assumption that, there's, that if life did emerge in the universe, it would be similar to our life and there's only one solution. Um, and I think that what we've got to start to do is go out and did look for selection detection rather than an evolution detection rather than life detection. Um, and, I, and I think that once we start to do that, we might start to see really interesting things. Um, and we haven't been doing this for very long. Um, and we are living in an expanding universe, so that makes the problem a little bit harder. <laughs> uh, Everybody's always leaving. Um, but I'm, I'm distance-wise. I'm, I'm very optimistic that we will. Well, I don't know. There are two movies that came out in the same within six months of one another: Ad Astra and Cosmos. Ad Astra, the very expensive blockbuster, you know, with Brad Pitt in it and um, saying there is no life and it's all, you know, we've got a we're, life on Earth is more precious than Cosmos, which is a UK production, which basically aliens came and visited Earth one day and they were discovered in the UK, right? It was quite, it's a, it's a fun film. Um, and But I really loved those two films. And I'm, I, I, and at the same time, those films, at the time those films were coming out, I was working on a paper, um, a life detection paper, and I found... It was so hard to publish this paper. And it was almost as depressed, I got so depressed trying to get this science out there that I felt the depression of uh, the, the film in Ad Astra, like life, there's no, no life elsewhere in the universe. 
And but I but I'm incredibly optimistic that I think we will find life in the universe, firm evidence of life, and it will have to start on Earth, making life on Earth and surprising us. We have to surprise ourselves and make non-biological life on Earth. And then people say, well, you you made this life on Earth, therefore it's the, you're part of the causal chain of that, and that might be true. But if I can show how uh, I, I'm able to do it with uh, very little cheating or very little information inputs, just creating like a, a, a model planet, some description, and watching it, watching life emerge, then I think that we will be even to, to persuade even the hardest critic that, that, that it's, it's possible. Now, with regards to the Fermi paradox, I think that we might crush that with the JWST. It's basically, if I recall correctly, the mirror is about 10 times the size of the Hubble that we're going to be able to do spectroscopy, um, look at colors of exoplanets, I think. Not brilliantly, but we'll be able to start to classify them. And we'll start to get a real feel for what's going on in the universe on these exoplanets. Because it's only in the last few decades, I think, maybe even last decade, that we even um, um, came to recognize that exoplanets even are common. Mm -hmm. And I think that that gives us a lot of optimism that life is um, going to be out there. But I think we have to start framing, um, we have to start preparing the fact that biology is only one solution. I can tell you with confidence that biology on Earth does not exist anywhere else in the universe. We are absolutely unique.